Hi, my name is Carlos Andres Gomez. I'm a poet, writer, and performer from New York City. And uh, in my work, I typically like to shine a light on things that are often overlooked or I don't feel like they have a big enough platform. My deep and profound personal connection to this topic is my mom is a breast cancer survivor. And so I got goosebumps when I found out that the scientist I was paired with was a cell researcher studying breast cancer. I think what I find most inspiring about Heather, there's so many things to be inspired in, in Heather's work, is thinking about the ways that cell research has made these major breakthroughs that have helped marginalized populations and thinking about the focus on why African-American and Latino women have worse outcomes um, with, with a breast cancer diagnosis. So my idea was how do I turn something that's so powerful and so meaningful into a poem? Uh, that's a lot of pressure. This is truly like no other um, collaboration or commission I've ever done. There's been nothing like this and I'm so excited and honored and more than anything else I just hope that uh, I hope that Dr. Heather Beasley feels honored and moved by what I've created being the son of a breast cancer survivor. Um, what you do is so important and I hope that you feel celebrated by this piece. This piece is called Saving Our Cells. Through the microscope, a constellation of jade, infrared rainforest snapshots the potential, a future reprieved of grief. This is how it begins. Scientist and cell, the bond that becomes building block to bridge a past scarce with survivors and a future where diagnosis means only treatment and survival, the scientist investigates cells to understand breast cancer, to know why African American and Latina women face worse outcomes. I remember my mom, two months after her breast cancer diagnosis, between surgery and her first radiation, at our window, staring up at the sky above Queens, consider the boundaries of medicine made boundless. The finite, transmuted infinite. Through cell research, the scientist interrogates a lush landscape of oblong emerald shapes that take up space in her dreams, both sleeping and not. Speaking directly to her cancer cells, she says, I never think of you as bad cells, you were normal. And now you've lost your way. If only we could consider each cell, not as monster, but more like a toddler with their awkward steps, stumbling through a misunderstanding world. Only through this bond, scientist and cell, not fights, but each day resting tired eyelashes against this glass drawn again and again by wonder and purpose. And ultimately it is only this bond, this communicating on the most microscopic scale that has led to breakthroughs in medicine that have reshaped human history from polio to leukemia, HIV to the vaccine for COVID-19. Here is a cell researcher who has never known a spotlight teaching cells to regenerate and recover and heal and change the humble cell, membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm, teaching us how to save ourselves by witnessing science simply saving a cell that has lost its way. I remember my mom, two months after her breast cancer diagnosis, between surgery and her first radiation, at our window staring up at the sky above Queens, consider the sound. <laughs> Wow. It's so 
powerful because the words that he uses, you know, it's so odd how someone you've never physically met can capture what you feel without knowing you personally. And I felt like he understood my vision in poetry. And for me, that was so important. One thing that stood out to me is he talked about the fact that a scientist never knows the spotlight. And it's the spotlight from a scientist that can figure out what really kind of changes everything. It's not about, yes, this experiment didn't work or that experiment didn't work. It's the fact that what I'm doing in the lab might be impactful years beyond. And that's what's important. What I'm doing now might save another boy like Carlos whose mom is suffering from breast cancer. And so this campaign means so much more to me than just putting myself in the spotlight. It's the fact that people work so hard. I put in 60, 70, 80 hours a week for an experiment that takes two hours. And sometimes it means nothing. But when you find something that could possibly help people's parents, parents shouldn't have to tell their children that they're diagnosed with something that they can't fix. And that's my, that's where the pain comes from, is that it does disproportionately affect women that look like me. And this piece really showcases that, you know, the cells are so important. You know, like, I, this is just exciting to me. These are happy tears too. I loved it. That, I'll leave there. I will stop being as loquacious as I am and just say, I loved it. <laughs>